We have a slight problem this morning. His taxi is stuck at broken down level crossing about five miles away. They've sent me a text saying they'll get here as soon as they can. He's not best pleased about it. Everybody's love Raymond has just finished, but he asked for the TV to be turned off. So we haven't had to resort to the protest song that is Frasier, which is good, but he's not really enjoying the fact that we're now having to wait. Oh yeah. Yeah. Taxi will be here soon. Yeah. Still keen to go. Just need the taxi to get here, really. Hmm. Oh, for a minute there, I thought he wasn't going to go. He has just left. It is nearly ten past nine, which, I mean, it's not massively late, but the taxi is supposed to be here at quarter to nine. So getting him to wait 20, 25 minutes is a pretty big deal, and it's something he wouldn't have been able to do six months ago. And I do find myself in those situations thinking, right, at what point do we stop waiting for the taxi to come and just take him in my own car? Because then at least we get him to school. He wanted to go to school, so I didn't want to mess up the fact that he does seem to be enjoying school at the moment and he wants to go by making the experience of getting there bad by having all the waiting, and he doesn't like waiting. But at the same time, I don't want to get him into the habit of, oh, daddy can take me to school. I don't need the taxi at all now and then by taking him today set a precedent forevermore because as we've discussed previously the long-term plan is all about building up his independence getting him long term uh, i mean it, from a conversation we have with the school recently it might not even be that long term they're starting to push for it now we want to be able to get him back on the on the school minibus so we're, we're progressing towards that towards him being on a minibus with other kids all going to the same school we don't want to go back a stage by me taking him in my car because then we're setting things back on progressing back towards that independence because we don't want long term him having to rely on me getting him to school. We want him to be able to get to school himself because he wants to be there because that's where we need to build up towards as he grows up. But he really wasn't happy. But he did well. He just sort of was re-watching the Goose Fair video video from the other day to bring himself to his happy place. So that video had its had its benefits. Those of you who ask how he feels about his whole life being on YouTube and I mean we even get is it child abuse as a question. Well no it's not child abuse. And yes he he gives as much permission as he's capable of giving. He can't sit there and say to us I give permission for my life to be on YouTube. But at times of stress like that he's able to turn to videos of good days that he's had and he used it to cope with a bad situation so there you go there's a massive positive towards us vlogging our lives and him being a part of that without this vlog he might not have gone to school this morning because he wouldn't have had that video to go back on to help him cope with a situation that he was less comfortable in so good work vlog you've got Andy to school today and that's a big positive now I've brought it up, I did want to address this whole is it child abuse thing, which as of present count, we've had about 125,000 views on the, video, the Andy's Back to School video, Back to School Autism Meltdown, which if you're new to the channel, it's probably the video that got you here. It's gone a bit nuts over the last three or four days, getting a bit of a push on some other channels that are based on autism or who create content about autism and it's great. It's bringing in extra exposure to the channel, it's bringing in lots more people and we are being inundated with new subscribers and messages from people saying, we found the channel through this video, love what you're doing, keep up the good work. Loads of really positive messages of support. Lo it's a, there's a real feeling of positivity and awesomeness around the channel at the moment. There is, however, a small number of really negative, cruel, mean, unhelpful, unconstructive comments. We've mentioned them before on vlogs, but we're getting our fair share of the why don't you just put a gun in his mouth nonsense that we, I don't really want to get into that stuff today either. That's always going to happen because there's a lot of ignorant morons out there and they'll comment ignorant moronic things because that's how they are. But then there's, there's the third group, which is a new type of comment that we haven't really had before and it has has made me think a little bit. I think the comments are wrong but at least they're made with good intentions and these are the ones where people are saying have you got Andy's permission to put these videos on the internet? How do you think Andy feels about a meltdown being on a YouTube video that over 100,000 people have seen. This is child abuse. There's even been three or four people comparing us to Dado5. Is that what he was called? The guy who had his kids taken off him for pranking them and was charged with child abuse, I think. If you're, if you're a lawyer and watching this, I don't know anything about this guy. He sounds great though. And 
me and Anna have talked about this before. We talked about it when we first started the channel, which is why if you watch back through the vlog from the start, there's a long period of the channel where we never refer to Andy or either of the other two kids by name. There's a bit that where we protected his date of birth, we didn't want that sharing. And even for the first month, six weeks maybe, of the vlog, we didn't really mention autism. We didn't feature Andy on the channel really at all. It was never meant to be an autism channel. It's still not an autism channel. It's a vlog channel. It was originally my vlog. It's kind of become our family vlog now. We all feature on it a bit, but primarily, I would say still 75, 80% of the content is me talking to you through this camera. It's my vlog. And Andy's a big part of that because of all the changes that have happened to my life because of him. Because of me becoming his carer, me giving up work, and all of the stuff that's connected to making these videos that often feature him. He's a massive part of it. So, but we're not an autism channel. And I don't think I'd want to be. We, we talked about it before. We did a video about a month ago where we where we toyed with the idea of either making this an autism channel and moving the non-autism stuff onto a third channel or keeping this just as Kev's vlog and starting a third channel that's just about autism. And in the end, mainly from the feedback from you guys and from the conversations me and Anna had about it, we decided actually we've got the gaming channel where we have the gaming stuff and then this is the vlog channel where we have the life stuff. And sometimes... Autism and autism issues will be a big part of our life like it is at the moment because of finally getting Andy back to school and the changes to our family and our personal circumstances because of his autism. And sometimes it won't be as big a deal. If he's still going to school every day in a year's time, there's, you know, there's only so many times I can greet him off the taxi and tell you that he won an award or has been playing golf. It becomes repetitive and boring. And at that point, he'll probably start to feature less or feature more along the lines of the way he did when we went to Goose Fair at the weekend, where it's him just having fun being a kid and not having fun being the autistic kid. But I'm getting away from the issue a little bit because I'm not massively comfortable talking about it, but I do want to address it because I want to get our say out there. Is featuring him in these videos is putting a video of our son having a meltdown on the internet for thousands of people to see is it child abuse and has he given consent and i think they're the two big issues around the issue of consent it's a really tricky one because he he's not able to communicate on a level where he can say to us yes i'm fine with you putting these videos on the internet equally he can't say no please don't put these videos on the internet what we do know is he regularly watches the vlog he uses it as a way to to process his day so the fact that he's able to do that suggests that he enjoys it. Also, you've seen how into the vlog that he gets. When we're at a church, he'll be directing me and telling me bit, which bits to film. When he feels like a video has reached its conclusion, he'll do the outro. And when he's in a lift holding his DS, he's, he's, he's a YouTuber when he does that. He's commentating on what he's doing. He loves YouTube. So I think on that basis, we can assume that he enjoys being part of a YouTube channel. On the issue of, is it child abuse, putting that video of him online, I just don't see that it is. How, how are we abusing him? You know, I think that video is an important video to put out there because it raises awareness. And for every person who has a little moan that they don't think the video is appropriate, and for every person who says something horrible about Andy, like we should put a gun, in, gun against his head or something, for every person who's negative in that way, we get 10, 15 people who say, thank you so much for making this video. My son, my daughter is exactly like this, or my son or daughter has autism. They don't quite do this, but this is something that they do, or I've got autism myself. This, this is great that you're raising awareness of this. So thank you, because you're making us see that we're not alone. You're showing that, and speaking as, I mean, if you, even if you go back a year in our lives, we, weren't getting enough support from professionals. You know, the, the doctors, the social workers, all these people, they, they, they were doing what they could in very difficult circumstances, very little money to spend, not enough provision. And we did feel alone. Anna, we've talked before about how Anna was locked away in this house basically for a year and a half, imprisoned by the fact that Andy wouldn't go to school. And she felt really alone and abandoned. And Anna has said herself, a number of times that she wishes she'd have found something like this back then. It's one of the reasons why sometimes you even catch it in the videos, certainly the early ones, where we'll kind of join a problem mid-scene, if you like, and it'll start with Anna saying, film this, turn the camera on, because in the early days, the 
Not the birthday I had in mind. That video from back in February from my dad's birthday, that one really springs to mind because I was super reluctant to film any of that. I, I was very conflicted about whether it was the right thing to do. And Anna just basically turned to me and said, people need to see this. They need to see what it's like. And people who are going through this need to see that it's not their fault. They've not caused it. It's it's something that's happening to other people out there. And we need to we need to raise awareness. We need to group together. We need to we need to try and make some change. We need to try and make the world see that these issues are issues that are out there, that there's a lot of people going through them and hopefully work towards getting some kind of better provision in place to offer support to the families who are going through it and the children who are going through it because at the moment we're kind of just left on our own. We've got far more out of having this vlog and out of chats with you guys and even things like the medication that Andy's on. We went down the route of exploring medication because someone recommended it in a vlog comment and you've seen what difference that's made this year. We, we didn't really have a clue what to do, where to turn, and I think the fact that we're putting this content out there for people to see and people to interact with and the fact that we keep the conversation going after the videos end, we're always active in the comments, we're always active on social media. We gain as much as we give from, from doing this. You know, we put the video out every day, but then we have all the feedback that comes in from everybody that we then put into our daily lives and it massively benefits us. And if we hadn't have made that video of Andy having a meltdown on the way to my dad's at the start of the year, he might not be on medication now he might not be back at school now he might not have gone and enjoyed the fair at the weekend if we hadn't have made the video about his back to school meltdown we might not have learned about car harnesses for example which is something we're now actively exploring i'm sure there's other learning points that came out in the comments on that video that i don't even remember now but I think, yeah, it's probably, and I can't, I can't see inside his head. It's not something he's ever, I've never even seen him watch the bad videos, if you like. He only watches the days that he enjoys. He picks them out based on the thumbnail. If it's a day he remembers he enjoyed, he'll watch it. Never seen him watch a video where he's having a meltdown. And that might be because he's not interested in it, because it's not got the fare in the background, or it's not got a lift in the background, or a train, or a tram. Or it might just be that perhaps he genuinely doesn't like it being on there. And if he ever said to us, I don't like these videos being on the internet, we take him off there straight away but i personally believe that he's benefited more from those videos being made than than he's been harmed by them i don't think he's been harmed in any way i think they've done more good than harm i don't like using the word harm because i don't think they've done any done him any harm i don't think they've caused any problems because i don't think he's aware of them and without making this without this vlog without making these videos, without the ongoing daily conversation that we have with all of you. And we massively appreciate the fact that you all take the effort to, to come in and reply and treat us like real people rather than just people making videos on the internet. We, we have proper conversations with you and it's great. But because we make this vlog, he's now on medication that's massively helping him. I'm now at home as his carer making sure he gets to school, he's in a proper school routine. He's he's in just in, he's a, in a much better place now than he was a year ago. Anna's gone back to uni, which means she's less stressed, which means she's able to be more happy and bouncy and fun with him because, you know, after 18 months, it grinds you down and he would have felt that. And we're all in a better place now because I'm less stressed because I'm here. I'm not leaving the door, leaving it all behind every day and letting Anna cope with it and going away and doing what in itself was a stressful job as a teacher. And I think as a family, Andy included, we've benefited massively from this vlog existing, including those videos of him having a meltdown. So I wish I was coming at it from a more intellectual and fact-based angle where I could say these are reasons it's not child, abu uh, child abuse. I don't have that. I don't know that. This is all done based on intuition, gut feel, a real person talking to you through a camera lens, which is what this vlog is all about. Nothing that we do on here is researched. Nothing that we do on here is based in fact. It's all my instant view on something as it happens. So that's why sometimes we get stuff wrong. I hold my hands up. I shouldn't have made the video I'm moaning at the school and I certainly shouldn't have told you what the school was and I certainly shouldn't have asked people to send the school emails. If you are watching the videos out of order, you'll get to one eventually where I ask you to send your school an email. Please don't. I really genuinely wish I hadn't made that video, but it was a video that was based on real emotion, real feeling at the time. It was an instant reaction to something that had happened. And because of that, I haven't taken it off the channel because I think it needs to be out there. You need to see what the highs and lows are. And again, it comes back to it being a way to share our experiences with people so they can see they're not alone. I'm embarrassed when, I, when I've when i tried to watch that video back, I'm embarrassed. 
by the video that I made about me. But on the same basis that I leave his meltdown videos on the internet, I'm leaving that video on the internet because people need to see the highs and the lows. And I think that's important. So do I think it's child abuse? Absolutely not. It's just not child abuse. I'm gonna go and make a cheese sandwich because I'm hungry. Um, I just opened this box because I thought it was the coat hangers that I ordered yesterday. It's not, it's, it's insulation for the garage. There's, there's no note. I didn't order this. There's just a receipt. So it's not from Amazon? No, it's from the garage door guru. So firstly, someone's got our home address, which is quite impressive because it didn't come through the PO box. Unless it's come through Amazon somehow, I don't know. The sender is, no, it's just come direct from the, thank you, whoever sent me this. In future, please use the PO box, unless you're somebody I know. In which case, give me a heads up that it's coming. But thank you, that's really cool. That will help keep me much warmer in the garage. I don't know what to do with it. Do I just stick this to the back of the door? Is it? It's sticky backed. I literally just stick this to the back of the door. That's very clever. Thank you, whoever it's from. Let me know down in the comments who sent this, because that's very cool. And also, on the topic of thank yous, and I got me some Bugs Bunny shoes. Aren't they the best shoes ever? Bugs Bunny shoes. And something smelly. Santa's Christmas from Lush. Which? Take the top off, the black bit. Take my top off? No, the black top. Smells like Christmas. So, it's a day of gifts for me, which is awesome. Hello. Oh, hello. You all right? Yes. You had a good day? Yes. It's splendid. Is that the fair? Yeah. Late going and late home today apparently. It's 20 past three. I guess they bring him home at normal kicking out time now because oh, yeah. it's getting later and later every day. Let's have today's update on what's been happening. Good day for Andy. He worked well in maths, computing, sequences and patterns. And literally we've been learning about birds of prey. In live schools Andy listened well about healthy foods he something a very little sort of healthy and unhealthy foods. Two right. words I don't know what it is, but. So he does today, and he looks very tired. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh my god, he made a headshot! And uh, feeding into what we were talking about earlier, he's watching Goose Fair. In October. In October. Yeah. Some twigs and pop. What, well, you ready to go back, are you? Next year? Yeah. Um, what's this here? In October, the shoes. And where do they go? In here. And where do the shoes go? In this cupboard. Go on, go and put the shoes away, please. October. October. At Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah, have some twigs and pop. Twigs and pop. With Lewis. With Lewis. School Lewis for friends. Okay. No granddad's today. That was him checking the date board on the wall, which we need to update, actually, but I've lost the pen. I'm going to find a new pen and update it so he knows what's happening this weekend. But he still uses it regularly, which is really, really cool. Andy, look. Okay. Andy, stay tall. What? Hello. Hello. Can we say hello to him? Come on, Robin. No! Yes! He's busy! No, he's lovely. Off the back of the video from a couple of days ago, this is about as close as these two ever get to each other. Before I put the camera on, he'd already told him to get out of the room twice, and he'd only been in a minute, probably. Hey! Hey! Out of the bin! For some reason, I've got into the habit of showing you what we're having for tea. We're having, this is a hairy biker's, hairy dieter's recipe. We've got Moroccan chicken, which is currently marinating in, that's like cumin, coriander, yogurt, harissa, and some garlic. It's been marinating for about 20 minutes. That'll go in the oven shortly. With some couscous, which has got loads and loads of fresh veggies in. We've got some courgette, onion, variety of multicolored peppers, with some chili flakes, salt, pepper, a little bit of oil. We're gonna fry that up in a second, stir fry that while I get the couscous on, put the chicken in the oven, and then we're gonna have a healthy meal. This is gonna be three days in a row of healthy cooking, proper home cooked healthy cooking, not even batch cooked. Just getting on with it, getting it cooked. I am very conscious of the fact that we've had multiple visits to barbecue restaurants recently and there's at least two more in the next couple of weeks. So in between really unhealthy meals and weekends away, 
we're trying to be a little bit more healthy. This meal, really nice. Lots of chilli and delicious spiciness involved in it. And there we have the finished, the finished meal, chicken, couscous, lemon, optional yoghurt stuff. Not really a fan of yoghurt, but a healthy dinner. And just like that, the day's got away from me a little bit again. I'm streaming in 10 minutes. It's going to be my second stream of the day. I did an ad hoc Football Manager stream earlier on today when they did, announced a new feature for the new game. So that was quite cool. I'd never done sort of on-demand streaming on YouTube before. It went down quite well. Uh, but yeah, it's been a been another busy day and a successful day. I'm getting so, so excited for the weekend now. Manchester in just two days' time. Very, very excited. Um, I do just want to say before we close things out, I hope that bit earlier on when I was talking about the haters, I know to ignore them. Because I know that's the sort of comment that we normally get whenever I bring stuff like that up. I know to ignore them. And I've watched a little bit of the footage back and I, I do do go on a bit about it. And I hope, I hope future Kev tomorrow morning edits it down a little bit because... I went round the circles a few times and it just, it, you try, you really, really try not to let the comments get to you. And then every now and again, you get one that just gets under your skin. I'm, months ago, it was the person who said, just shoot him. And obviously that got under my skin. And this time, just having someone come out directly and say that it's child cruelty, that just, mm, it does just, you, I know to ignore them. And I've ignored so much over the last few days, 125,000 views on that video now. There's plenty of horrible comments that I'm ignoring. And it was just that one. And now next time someone says it, it won't get to me at all because I've had time to work it through my system now, but it's the first time anyone said it. And ooh, ooh, it, it was, ooh. I'm all right now though. So don't worry about old Kev. I'm gonna get on with my stream, play some Football Manager, get ready for an awesome weekend in Manchester, which I hope some of you will be able to join us at. Details of it in yesterday's vlog are over on the Facebook group at facebook.com slash FM. If you have enjoyed today's vlog, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more, and thank you very much for watching.